Our seas and oceans have long been viewed as a wide, open, free space, an immense frontier associated with mystery. In the 17th century, this perspective developed into the freedom of the seas doctrine. This limited any nation's rights to the ocean and declared the rest of the seas to be free to all nations belonging to no one and which all nations could use as and when they wished. Dramatic growth in use of the oceans directly challenged this doctrine by the 20th century. The ocean's resources were increasingly used for multiple economic uses. As new technologies increased human abilities to exploit further resources, conflicting claims multiplied. Fishing fleets Transport ships, oil drilling, all depended on the seas for their success. While the oceans were being exploited as never before, concerns started to grow over the impact of all these anthropogenic uses caused. Potato-shaped nodules, found almost a century earlier and lying on the seabed in deep waters, were attracting increased interest because of their valuable metal content. Large fishing vessels were roaming the open oceans with fish stocks starting to show signs of depletion. Offshore oil was also gaining a lot of attraction, with nations carving up the continental shelf with its rich oil resources. It was in this climate, in 1967, that Dr. Pardo, Malta's ambassador to the United Nations, called on the nations of the world to recognize their potential devastation of the oceans and the importance of the oceans to world peace. In a memorable speech, Dr. Pardo asked nations to open their eyes to the looming conflict that could devastate the oceans. The same oceans which were the lifeline of men's very survival. He pleaded for an effective international regime over the seabed and the ocean floor beyond a clearly defined national jurisdiction. Pardo held that the problems of ocean space were closely interrelated and had to be considered as a whole. Dr. Pardo set in motion a 15-year process which culminated in the adoption of the 1982 Convention on the Law of the Sea. He thus earned the title Father of the Law of the Sea. The Maltese Initiative found support particularly with those states that were claiming for the establishment of a new international economic order. In the Maltese proposal, these states saw a unique opportunity to create for the first time, a new international maritime order that was based on the aspirations and goals of the international economic order. The Maltese initiative led to the convening of the third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea and culminated in the adoption in 1982 of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea which has been described as the constitution of the ocean. Malta has always been at the forefront of maritime and marine related issues. The role played by Malta through our permanent representative to the UN, Dr. Arvid Pardo, was crucial at that time as Malta had managed to underpin in the convention the desire to protect humanity's interests in the sea by introducing the doctrine of the common heritage of mankind. Fifty years later, Malta has established itself as one of the leading maritime hubs and service centers in the Mediterranean region. The Malta flag has become a reputable and internationally recognized ship register, now the largest in Europe and one of the largest in the world. It is an honor for Malta to have the first Maltese national, Professor David Attard, judge and the vice president of the Tribunal of the Law of the Sea. Malta also proudly hosts the Regional Marine Pollution Emergency Response Center for the Mediterranean Sea, established under the Mediterranean Action Plan of the United Nations Environment Programme. It is also in the same spirit that Malta will continue contributing towards the good governance of the oceans, 
having hosted the Our Ocean 2017 conference in Malta in October. Furthermore, as announced during the 72nd General Assembly, Malta is currently working on trying to achieve a more holistic approach to ocean governance, such that all maritime issues and threats can be tackled under one roof. It is therefore, in my view, quite urgent and imperative that the international community develops new legal prescriptions to deal with the problems facing the oceans as a whole. We need to develop new regimes that deal with the contemporary problems in order to ensure an effective and sustainable global ocean governance. It is of course important that once we adopt these rules, that governments enforce them. Here there is a problem of lack of expertise. In fact, this is why in 1988, the government of Malta together with the IMO, the International Maritime Organization, established IMLI, the International Maritime Law Institute based on the campus of the University of Malta. This institute provides comprehensive training and since 1988, over 139 governments have sent some 800 lawyers to train at IMLI. It is hoped that this unique network of legal experts will assist governments in the implementation of the new global ocean governance regime. The doctrine of human heritage of mankind underpinned at a political level the idea of sharing our common goods. Its concept, in fact, did not stop at the Convention on the Law of the Sea, but branched out and touched upon all issues concerning our common environment, including outer space. It is, in fact, a doctrine that should be considered wherever the common goods of our world are put under discussion. I believe it is now time for us to consider how the contemporary problems facing the oceans are to be dealt with. The 1982 Convention has served humanity well and continues to play a very fundamental role. However, today the oceans face new phenomena. To give some examples, climate change, which in fact was first brought to the attention of the General Assembly by the government of Malta in 1988. Sea level rise, ocean warming, acidification of the oceans. These are all problems that are threatening the stability of the international legal maritime regime. We also have new human problems, mass migration at sea. And therefore, it seems to me that it is now necessary to address these problems as a whole within the context of the law of the sea. Sea level rise has been the predominant uh, effect of climate change, perhaps being portrayed in studies. However, there are many other effects that climate change will be having on ocean life, particularly, for instance, acidification, which is a reality that we are discovering more and more nowadays, even with uh, the bleaching of corals, as well as the effects, the very negative effects on shellfish. Apart from that, the warming of the oceans will also cause the possible release of methane hydrates, which again generates more, a higher temperature in the oceans and in the atmosphere. An island state in the center of the Mediterranean, Malta has always been at the forefront of maritime and marine related issues. Throughout the historical trajectory, Malta has actively contributed to the international efforts towards the conservation and sustainable use of our seas and oceans. The world today is very different to how it was 50 years ago. Much has changed, but at the same time, so much more needs to be done, in particular at global level. One thing is for certain, 
the world needs a more effective governance regime for the oceans. In this regard, Malta supports efforts for the establishment of an intergovernmental panel on ocean governance, so that a more holistic and comprehensive approach characterizes actions on a multilateral level. In all this, the United Nations remains central and, in the words of Dr. Pardo himself, on the ocean floor, we must not betray our sacred trust and we must hand in this area unimpaired to our children and our children's children. Let us make it happen.